Cup was kind of the only thing else they played back in spring. But let's see what they're going to be playing here tonight. Taipei J Team going to be on your blue side. Liab on the red. And we start things off with a, a couple bands. It looks like maybe directed over to Rex from Taipei J Team, taking away his Zoe. Yeah, actually banned out against uh, against Rex last time these two teams did clash. Uh, pretty interested to see if we see the Galio being taken away from Nesty just because that was such an influential mid lane pick. Uh, we do want to look at the mid laners as taking over the map. While Rex does do his own thing and Nesty is very supportive of the rest of his team, they're both the catalyst towards their team's victories. And even that's going to be another one actually coming out here from Taipei J team. Taking away the Karma wouldn't shock me if we also maybe see a Twisted Fate wouldn't be out of the picture to try and three ban Rex as that has been often the go-to approach by a lot of these squads when they go up to Lia because Rex when he is on form is able to carry back the squad. But look at that, it's gonna be the Galio actually being banned out away from Nesty. Yeah, the Silas ban as well coming through from J-Team is a lot of respect given over to Rex, who did 1v9 on it when we saw Liab get their upset victory over PSG. Granted, it leaves up the Callista that they banned against Dawn last time these two clashed and could actually give some of Lil V's more scaling picks a little bit of a run for their money in lane. All right, and there we go. Twisted Fate actually going to be the final ban here on the side of Liab, actually taking that one from Rex themselves. And now for Taipei J team, they say, all right, well, we'll just go ahead, lock in the Aphelios. Not usually an issue, though, for Liab, as Don always okay to go ahead and take the Ash into this matchup. Yeah, Ash fine, Ezreal fine, just poke him from a distance, stay out of his range. Uh, and yeah, Aphelios has fantastic burst, fantastic DPS, but only if you melee him, only if you get in range of being mowed down by that flamethrower. Uh, Almost called it a flame spitter, by the way. My rumble main is kind of bleeding over. It's seeping but, out. um, yeah, pretty happy to see Ash secured here. You get a good pick across the map. You have some Ooh. good follow up. This is really nice because it's flexible to multiple roles and it gives you a ton of kill pressure and global pressure and engage all of that good stuff for Liab. And this is kind of a little bit of a niche pick for Rex. We saw it once or twice back in spring and it actually did allow Liab to get some very close games against some top squads. I do believe this ran, they ran it up against PSG back in spring and they were almost able to take home the victory. So maybe trying to catch Taipei J team off guard. Hana though, gonna fall back onto something he's very comfortable on that trundle. A little bit of an oof for me here, just because Hana been so good for this team, such a proficient player, insane with his map pressure, flashy, highlight reels, what more could you ask for? More than a trundle at least, because this champion glorified support at any stage of the game. Still, Hana very smart in his pathing, <laughs> very cerebral, should be able to get his lanes into a very good position to scale. And for Woody? gonna not opt into the hyper aggressive engage that we sometimes see out of him with the Nautilus and Leona instead opting to something that can provide a little bit of safety for that Aphelios it's gonna be that Thresh locked in and now for Liab doi doi this would be a little bit of a change up he usually opts into the Lee Sin when it's available maybe bringing out the Nidalee here uh, I do realize that the Trundle was also a takeaway from Doi Doi, who has defaulted to the champion more often than not. Nidalee does have a much better matchup 1v1 into Hana, but the issue is Nesty as a player never lets his jungler 1v1. You always have to factor in the JT mid laner will be there. If there's a skirmish on one side of the map, expect big commitment from Nesty. Though it is now putting a lot of pressure, and especially if Rex is going to be playing this Pantheon into the mid lane, that this mid-jungle duo be aggressive in the early game. You want to try and see some kills happen. You want to try and snowball your side lanes, and uh, that has been something that Liab have failed at before. Yeah, last time we saw these two face off against each other, by the way, we actually saw Mocha answer the... Uh... The Thresh with a Blitzcrank. I'm eager to see if J-Team just ban that one out or if Liab secure it here and kind of give away the fact that this Pantheon is indeed going to be Rex's mid lane comfort, as you potentially mentioned. All right, so Bard being a taken away. So again, banning toward Mocha. We'll see whether or not the Blitzcrank is also going to be banned out. For Liab, though, want to just get rid of some of the options for Nest T, opting to get rid of the Azir, as well as Rest not going to have his Wukong. Still has the option to go for a counter pick here as uh, Renekton actually going to be banned out here. So trying to get rid of something that could be possibly a safe matchup for Kanji. 
Yeah, as well as that, if you do lock the Renekton with Nidalee in lane, it's a really easy uh, empowered W stun from the Renekton into a very free spear from the Nidalee. Well, it's not an empowered W stun, wow. but it's an E stun off of the wall. Uh, and this is a rather aggressive composition being formed here for Leah. This is very much do or die in your first 20 minutes, make something happen, get the ball rolling, or uh, unfortunately you're just going to get outscaled. This means we can't see Orn come through for rest, and it means that you do have to consider Hana needs to be a little bit proactive about playing around the top side to shut down Kanji on the consistent scaling. Granted, Kanji, not the most spectacular performances on Camille so far this split, but definitely does have the pop-off potential if this team can get through the early game, thanks to the Pantheon, thanks to the Nidalee. All right, I do like this though from rest here they say all right we want to try and you know contest maybe not go necessarily for something tanky instead they say let's bring out the cannon let's go for those messy team fights get that slicing maelstrom down as well as we get to see nesty on a proper carry this time in the form of leblanc yeah leblanc of course moves around the map very very well can match the one three one if leab want to execute on it probably a bad idea you just want to really fish for picks and then uh you know, opt into these big commitments while the other trying to uh, trying to pressure the side lanes. Because if you go blow for blow with the global focused comp of Pantheon Ash and even Nidalee rotating a lot faster than Trundle, you may find yourself overwhelmed, much like PSG were just last week. And I think for uh, we take a look back at some of these picks in particular, like for Liab, this this is mainly screaming heavy aggression early, if I'm correct. Yeah, you do have huge amounts of commitment, a tremendous amount of engage, but there's also the late game insurance policy of Ash past three items, of Camille past three items, where no one on J team can actually match the Camille in the side lane, and Ash should be able to knock down the Aphelios in the duration of a Leona combo, of an Arrow stun, of a Pantheon CC, and you're just looking at this Thresh and the rest of J team to be keeping Lil V safe so that that absolutely does not happen. And that has been something that Type AJ team have been able to do before. We have seen a lot of resources invested into Lil V to keep him alive during fights. Likely will also be rocking the cleanse, but taking a step back here, Liap bringing out the heavy aggression. We have asked for this time and time again, and finally, they are here to answer it. Bring in the dives, try and get the ball rolling early. We'll see whether or not they're able to do that up against Taipei J team in our final game of the night. Oh no, it's Doi Doi's favorite emote, the thumbs down Silas, as well as the opposing team's logo. This is pretty much how he BMs. Last time he did this, he got absolutely stomped, by the way, so I'm a little bit hesitant to uh, get him too excited. <laughs> is the flaming alien a bard meet? from the new skin. I believe that's the new Astronaut Bard skin meep. I think that's what the emo emote's going for. It's a little also, bit- Also, I swear, I I thought that was Graves, not Silas, and now I realize it's Silas. What? And I feel kind of, <laughs> what? well, they have beards, you know, it's- Not, yeah. not all, you know, cha male champions that have beards are like the same person here, but it's all right, I'm just saying. Also, he has like chains. Can you not see the chains? Man. I'm not wearing my glasses. That's I don't know excuse. what else to tell you. That's what you're going to go with? Okay. Well, tell me this. What is the game plan here for J-Team at the very least? We mentioned Liab getting aggressive, but what are they looking to do here in the first half of the game? Yeah, the thing about J-Team right now is that you need to see a little bit of proactivity come through from the LeBlanc. At the same time, you need Trundle to kind of dissuade any of the Nidalee early game shenanigans while simultaneously scaling up this Aphelios to a late game hyper carry threat. My biggest eyebrow raise, though, is dictated towards rest on this Kennen, who's packing the Doron's Blade, of course, pretty standard. You, your adaptive force is AD, you get to harass people from range, but Grasp, is this AD Kennen? If so, can he match the Camille past three items? I'm still unsure, but it does mean heavy emphasis 
on 131 from J Team 2. Yeah. Uh, I, this will be a little bit of a change up. We've yet to see kind of an AD cam cannon come out as far as the PCS goes. Usually it's AP just going for those big Because it's bad, fights. Opal. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know you love your AD cannon, all right? And you're, you'd be happy. Uh... Come on. I know you're just trying to make it happen. Uh, oh. But all right, that's kind of your plan here. Nesty, and Nesty has stated himself, I can, in fact, play the carries. This is very much his opportunity to prove that fact. Yeah, Hana starting bot side, then walking top, does kind of mean that if Doi Doi went for a level 2 gank, the Trundle could answer. And because he didn't, it means Hana's now going to be around that bot side to, as we mentioned, hold the hand of this Aphelios through the early game, and then cash in on that late game hyper carry come the later stages. And seeing here now, first clear is going to be finished up for our junglers. Maybe we'll see Doi Doi try and make a play happen in one of these lanes. We already see Rex, though, getting heavily aggressive. Is going to get stopped up, though, onto the pillar. Forced to flash away, maybe getting a little bit too aggressive. Mocha was on the roam, but a little bit of a mistiming coming out there from Liab. Credit to Mocha for being proactive on that roam, and you're seeing a lot of synergy start to come through from the Korean duo of Liab. Of course, Rex and Mocha being that import duo who have taken the league by storm in the past, not really clicking so much with the rest of the team, but still a good effort there to try and respond to an early gank from Hana. Uh, and especially you talk about Rex here from Liab has often been that member, especially back in spring. When he played onto his carries, when he played on his favorite champions like the Zoe, he looked phenomenal. We wanted to see more of that instead of him having to resort back to more supportive pickups like we've seen here in summer like the Karma. Yeah, and with the departure of Candy from PSG, we thought the Pantheon mid days were long over, but we're now seeing it back from Rex, who, as we mentioned, plays to the beat of his own drum. Whether it's on the TF, just consistently chilling in a side lane, he plays so many global champions but has such low kill participation that you can clearly see this guy utilizes the map movement for his own benefit uh, and this is a little bit awkward dodoy has been a member to be caught out by early wards is now rest is also going to stop the back which is there you go he brought out his own silas emote as uh, dodoy now going to be wasting a little bit of time heading back to base yeah this happened twice by the way the first time the sweeper came out to clear out that uh that yellow ward, but now again, the repeat gank. Uh, honestly, we said it in champs, so like this Camille, budget Renekton with the uh, targeted E stun into a free sphere. Cool, but it's a cannon. He's really safe, really mobile, and really just able to soak that first Nidalee gank for a lot of alleviated pressure on J Team scaling carries. But I think for Liab, we are still waiting for that level six, especially once Rex is able to hit it, once we start to see a little bit of action come in alongside him and Doi Doi. I think that's really when this composition at least starts coming online early for Liab, alongside as well as your Crystal Arrow and your Solar Flare in the bottom. Yeah, definitely do have to pay attention to that. Of course, the first Pantheon ult, very similar to like first Nocturne ult, first TF ult. Mm -hmm. Any of these champions with semi-global or global ultimates, that first one, whether you blow the summoner, whether you get a kill, really sets the pace for how successful the subsequent attempts are really going to be. We see Doi Doi now pathing here in toward the mid lane. Nesty, a little bit aggressive, has himself, of course, the quick additional pick up with his level six. Unfortunately, now for Doi Doi has to get oh. himself back over to safety. Saw the chain was coming out from Nesty as well as Hana nearby. Going to be the summoner down on the Nidalee. Yeah, something I neglected to mention, by the way, was that, you know, we ran with this narrative of... Okay, we ran with this narrative of uh, Camille stun being like the budget Renekton. Pantheon also, W, targeted CC, can set up for a spear so well. And yet the solo laners for J-Team, their spider senses oh, no. are tingling. The hook comes, hook comes in onto Dawn. He gets caught out, and that's going to be first blood going in favor of Taipei. Oh. J-Team, Lil V, though. Unfortunately, Mocha getting hungry for this kill. Over flash. the wall he goes, gets the flash. Unfortunately, he will be trading back another kill. And it's a two for one in the bot lane for Taipei J-Team. Still a solid pickup on the side of Liab to trade one back. You see the fact that the cleanse was taken by the Aphelios meant he had no heal to deal with the onslaught of damage coming through from Ash and Leona. And good decisive turnaround. Once the hook is hit onto the Ash, Liab say, okay, we're kind of screwed here. Let's commit anyway. Don't flash away. Just fight, fight, fight. Trade back. 
and as a result, it means there's no free Drake to follow up on that first Flood coming through from Taipei GT. And you saw Mocha, he's not afraid to try and counter back with a play of his own, but unfortunately, three versus two don't go in their favor. And that's two kills going on over to Taipei J team to start things off. Not necessarily the start they were looking for for Liab. Yeah, that being said though, Liab now inching closer and closer to having access to those wombo combo heavy engage ultimates. Issue is, if the game starts to slip away from you, cool, you've engaged onto LeBlanc, but do you really want to hard commit for one target when the Aphelios is just going to mow through you? That being said though, game is not lost yet. Liab can still bounce back if they continue to fish for picks and J-Team need to keep the pressure up if they're gonna continue to pull this one through. It's a little bit of a calm before the storm, but now we see level six is online here for Liab, as well as some of your first item backs getting some components. You got again, some lethality over toward Rex. You got Greaves picked up for the Ash to kind of go to first item back in most of the matchups we have been seeing. Uh, and already some setup possibly toward this dragon, but already being answered here by Taipei JT. Yeah, I like that you mentioned the tier two boots from the Ash in particular, because it means with this Aphelios lacking the cleanse, you hit the Solar Flare, you hit the arrow, you just chase him down with repeated uh, frost shots from the Ash passive. And it's a really bad time for Lil V if Liab decide to pull the trigger. Hawkshot is going to go ahead and spot this out. Doi Doi is making his way on down. Hana only at about half health. Moko goes in for the engage. Not level six just yet, but in comes that chance to create the arrow. Don, you gotta hit those. In came Rexo with the man drop. Gets the massive burst down onto Lil V. And that'll be enough to secure the kill. Teleport, though, is coming out from Res with the slicing maelstorm available. Nessie also on toward the flank. Res trying to get within range. In comes the flash, but not enough. And he does take down Mocha at the very least. But Liab are still able to find that kill on Lil V. Yeah, Rest almost turning that into a bloodbath in favor of J-Team, but Liab, credit to them, pulling the trigger on a Pantheon. It's not over yet. And they go down again as they get the jump oh. onto ST and they end up going oh. for the clone. Uh, one, one, one out of two chance of hitting that. Unfortunately, they choose the no. wrong one, but they do get the flash. It's unfortunate because, you know, the Pantheon Empowered Stun was enough damage to drop the LeBlanc health threshold for the clone to spawn. And that meant the clone stood between the LeBlanc and the Spear. Spear connected, marked the wrong one, and it's just doom and gloom from there on out. Still, credit Liab, a lot of proactivity here, good collapse, good re-engage, good everything except the way this actually turned out. And honestly, you're buying time for Camille to scale while all of this stuff is happening. Yeah, uh, I think Don, uh, maybe it's the caster curse, Liab, we praise. Yeah, his Ash has looked really good, uh, yada yada, and unfortunately, first arrow of the game goes just slightly wide. But nonetheless, we did get to see that level six come through for Liab, and cooldown's almost available now for them again. Maybe we get to see another play in the next minute or two. Exactly that, and we said that first Pantheon ult would be super impactful, not only did it get a kill, but it got some sums. Lil V wishes he had some. Again, another engage coming out as Dawn flashes on forward in the bot lane of Liab. Get themselves on the board once more as Dawn now with two kills on the Ash. No hesitation from the killer instinct of Mocha there. Pulls the trigger on EQ from the Leona to follow up on the Crystal Arrow and then waits out to shove with that Solar Flare. The slow connects. Athelios is actually faster than a lot of people expect, so I've, you know, he, he can just walk out of the epicenter, but it's still enough to shut him down, and it means that Liab equalized the kill count, even if objectives seem to be going by way of Taipei J team. Now you do see Hana at least going to try and start that one up, and we do see it though. Doi Doi has answered, and pings are coming out. Rex's ultimate going to be online here in about 20 seconds, so. Hana maybe not too sure on the cooldown just yet, is going to go ahead and back off here. Scuttle did get secured by Taipei J Team, so they do have knowledge that Liao are going to go ahead and start this off. We'll see whether or not Nesty tries to respond. Yeah, really good momentum swing in favor of Liab if they can get this one. As we said, these pick-based CC heavy engage comps really love playing with Fog of War and cracking open that mid-tier one with this hefty injection of gold to boot will be really useful uh, for this comp to fish more aggressively for picks. Speaking of fish for picks, by the way, Liab, if they continue with this momentum, single item spikes, beautiful for them. 
Yeah, I do see. Again, in Trinity Force starting to be put together by Kanji. That is going to be, though, Cloud Dragons secured on the side of Taipei J Team as Doi Doi is maybe looking for a play here toward the top side. Kanji does have ultimate. Got to be careful, though, that Slicing Maelstorm is very hazardous to try and go for a dive. Maybe they just want to go ahead and try and crack open oh. some plates. In comes the engage. The stun, though, is going to land from Rest, keeping Kanji at bay. You do see, though, looking for this play. You also saw Rex came in for the dive himself, going to do what he can, puts down the shield. Rest trying to get back a kill. It's not going to be enough, though, and it's a messy dive, and Nesty, Nesty. looking for Nesty. easy cleanup. It's a double kill for him. Yeah, a little bit too heavy on the commitment from Liab. They wanted the kill. They wanted the Herald to funnel some gold into Kanji's pockets, get this Camille rolling, and yet they take a year to kill the cannon. He even commits here with the Protobell into the E to clear out the wave. Just stun him and then go for the hard commit. Instead, they wait. Rex comes. Cool. But it buys time for LeBlanc to walk across the map. And he saw Nessie fast enough to make it on over. Of course, you got Distortion as well as your Mimic. There you go. Easy does it. And that's a nice double kill. And LeBlanc players should know if you get yourself three kills before 15 minutes, you're sitting pretty. Is this GLP or Gunblade? On the I guess it's Gunblade, actually. So you can play the 1-3-1 uh, for the LeBlanc. Nope, it's GLP. No, it's GLP. <laughs> All right. Okay. Some mana. Nice. We love it. We, we, we should know, we should know Nest T, again, we call him the utility support player in mid lane. Even on the carries, you got to make sure he hits his target. So maybe that's going to be the play. <laughs> Let's take a look, though, down toward this ball lane. There you go, Enchanted Chris Arrow. Good flash coming out from Lil V, able to escape that. Yeah, you say Nest T's utility focused. That collapse oh. wasn't to get two kills. It was to give two assists to his top laner. Meanwhile, we have ourselves a... Quick rotate on over as uh, Shelly oh, wanted. Such a clumsy popping. <laughs> yeah. She decided to go the entire way around, and actually, I think J Team can kill her before she's actually able to get the jump off. Yeah, but in goes that engage. Hana goes down low into the back line. Mocha able to secure the kill. Solar Flare lands in onto Woody, goes into a stopwatch immediately. Can they follow up for the kill? It forces out the flash out of the thresh. Woody with a death sense, not going to land on any targets. Good commitment from the side of Leah, but because they wait to pull the trigger, because that top lane play blew up in their face, no plates, no funnel, no gold, but a good amount of pressure they can then use to pressure down in the bot lane. Lil V, his spider sense is tingling yet again. Realizing he may be in danger as we take a look back on the This was wild, so dumb. What is the world, this? The world tour of Shelly, you could say, is Hanish just like, nope. Go away. Oh, Pillar. Pillar. Pillar really annoyed her. Okay. Nice. I like that. Solid. Credit to Hana. Right? I, I thought it was just like full she passing, needs, but no. She needs some room to make it through those, you know, tight spaces. Just saying. Uh, but it feels like, you know, J-Team, they're like, we could really kill this Rift Herald if we can just get onto the eye, and Hana gets a little bit too close to the action. Yeah, state of the game right now means that the Pantheon is still dealing a ton of damage regardless of the way the early game panned out. Three assists in pocket for Rex. Blinking health bar, by the way, since we came out of that replay. Uh, blinking mana bar for Nesty suggests the mid lanes did crash into each other. And it is actually J Team that used that pressure to secure a top lane tier one and get some gold swinging back into the pocket of Rest. And that also now unlocks Rest as well. Kanji is kind of still stuck, but he decides, all right, well, I'll go down into the bot lane, get some more fa farm as I go. Does have Trinity Force now complete for the Camille, as well as some other key components, as it does look like. We are going to go into a quick pause as we sort out what appears to be, from what I'm being told here, a mic issue over on the side of Liab. So hopefully they can get that sorted out and we can get ourselves back into the action. Yeah, pretty happy with the way the early game has gone so far for Liab, but again, Late game insurance of the Aphelios, uh, a little bit of a difficult execution mm -hmm. against the LeBlanc as well as she finds her mark time and time again, does mean that the timer is ticking a bit, but the insurance is that you do have that Camille just free farming in the top lane. Yeah, that, that's the hope there, at least on the side of Liab, that is uh, Kanji. Uh, is going to be able to come online. And I'll give it to Kanji this time. Last time we saw his Camille, he ended up getting camped by the enemy jungler and it was down like 0-3 by 15 minutes. A lot nicer of a game so far, you could say, at least for him. Uh, and hopefully not going to stunt his growth as much as we saw in the last time he was on the champion. Yeah, can we just 
revisit the implications of what a win for Liab here would mean. Oh, yeah. Because, okay, firstly, both of us would lose out on our perfect prediction day, but Liab lending a lot of respect to their name with their reputation of being King Slayers will have taken down two of the three top teams, three of the four top teams, rather, and honestly looking pretty stellar so far this game. Yeah, to note, if they are able to take down a Taipei J team here, they'd be able to take down the top two teams of the region currently, as well as the fourth. And just to give you a, a bit of, again, idea space of how wild their victories are, they could take down those teams, and then the only other team on this list that they were able to beat was Resurgence. So we, we talked a little bit of inconsistency on the side of Hong Kong Attitude. Well, Liab, they can never win against teams beside them in the standings, but above them, oh, they are close to victories. And to be honest, this is a much closer early game than I expected out on the side of Liab. And again, while this is kind of uh, the more difficult to execute 1-3-1 one, one kind of uh, thing we've seen Liab trend into, it's still really easy to pull the trigger on these engages. Very, very simple. Either we hit the arrow and we go in, we hit the solar flare, we go in. Just ease of execution cannot be stressed just how much of a benefit this gives over mm -hmm. to the rookies on Liab to really know how to function in this game. Well, maybe, you know, the call has been finally made by the coaching staff. They said, you know what, we said development, and they have also said themselves, you know, we can play the easier compositions, and the team apparently in scrims is actually rather good in most situations. They don't actually, you know, falter too much, but then there's the, the stage jitters that they kept having, especially in the first couple weeks. That's what they blamed everything as far as performance went when we kind of felt like it was these compositions. They were trying to go for these heavy poke as well as split How do push. you have stage jitters when playing at home, Opal? You know what? It's still, it's still, you know, it, it's still official, I guess is the best way. You know, it's uh, it's competition yeah. jitters. Okay? True, not true practice, enough. not practice. You know what? In practice, you can try and go for that crazy invade. And if you lose, well, you just say, you know, GG, go next, start the next round. It happens, honestly. Yeah, completely understand that one. Um... Liab, again, we said development split, can hope to upset some of the top teams even further, uh, deny that buy, and of course, secure themselves some sort of playoff berth here. The season is not over for them. Uh, we said it was development, but it could still be a little bit more than that. A little bit more. We'll have to see. Again, for you guys just joining us, this is, of course, our final game. And, of course, this is our super week of the PCS. We still have two more days of action. And then, of course, we have next week with another Friday as well as Saturday, and then possibly our tiebreakers on Sunday as we try and narrow down our top eight teams heading into playoffs. And if you guys enjoy any of the action, be sure to follow the pages, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or wanting to join us on Twitter at LOL Esports PCS. You guys can keep up to all the date with everything on the English side of the PCS. You know, brand new for this year. Get to see all the action from all these former LMS squads. So uh, it sounds like, though, we're back into the action. I can hear those game sounds, and let's get to it. Looks like we have resolved our tech issue. Beautiful. And you have to wonder, do Liab just immediately pull the trigger with some of their big cooldowns now that we're back into the game? Or do they just kind of take some time to, to gather themselves, uh, get reacclimatized to how things are playing out so far? and give Dawn that little bit of room to scale up on his Ash. Because we've been speaking about how Camille is that late game hyper carry. Ash is not too terrible either. Well, my question is now, we've, we've seen the first 15 minutes here for Liab. Has the game gone enough in their favor for them to be fitting, sitting comfortable? Or would you still want to be a little bit more ahead? I wouldn't say necessarily enough in their favor, but it's been promising to the point where there's no clear loss for them quite yet and that's something that you can happily walk away with when you consider this is the second to last place team playing against the second place team uh we're looking at liab to just you know cleanly execute here with that hard engage take a good fight utilize your strengths and honestly i'm taking a look over at some of these ultimates that are still available to them and saying, just pull the trigger, please, find a pick. 
Let's see here though, that is gonna be the first dragon started for Liab, and over the wall, Nesty goes, GLP is gonna be put on down, here it goes, 50-50 on the smite, Doi Doi is both scared, gets death sense immediately, Rex though, onto the back line, able to get some damage, but Rest does the same with a slicing Maelstorm, able to take down Doi Doi, Dawn though wants to try and trade back a kill, trying to do that onto Nesty, and he shall, Mocha though, falls low, and so will Kanji, as Rest is able to find himself a triple kill on the cannon, and fortunately Dawn caught out in the minions. Hana still with no pillar, but still looking for the dive. Able to sidetrack oh. away from the shuriken. Dawn stepping up, but not enough damage. Teleport coming TP. back out from Kanji. Kanji really wants to try and make this play happen. Maybe a little bit too aggressive, but in he goes. Pillar not able to interrupt him. Hana would have been a god, but it does not happen. Trading back the kill, and Liab strike back after the fight. It looked like it was three for one, but the Drake went to Liab, and then they clean up to boot. Playing off of Dawn's fancy footwork on the Ash, his signature pick. He was playing it long before anyone else, and he will play it for time to come. Nesty with the backline access, Rest with the backline access, the AP solo lane threats find their mark, but it's not enough to seal the deal because J Team split, J Team overcommit, J Team get knocked down, and Liab more than happy with the way that one turned out. And, and this is a this is a call coming out here from Kanji, and beautiful job by Don to avoid beautiful. the damage and actually keep himself alive. And Hana, he was e he he was either going to make the play of the century to interrupt this dash, but oh, just getting over there is Kanji on the right <laughs> angle. I bit my lip thinking that that hawk shot was the arrow coming back up as well, and then no, it, it wasn't necessarily in the end. So yeah, happy days for uh, side of Liab. Trade three for three. Get the Drake. Looks like they're going to get the Herald to boot as well. Really doing well at accelerating this early game that we said the Pantheon needed to spike in. Nidalee needed to spike in. And hey, any game where you can accelerate the Camille and Ash to that mid to late hyper carry state, beautiful for the side of Leo. And I don't know what is in, you know, the team lunches or the team dinner over at the Leab house, but they have something in it that makes the games up against our top squads rather interesting to watch. You're going to get yourself, again, it's a bloodbath to say the very least, as well as some damn close games against our top squads. They can't go against mid-pack, but top of the table, they do not back down. They have all the courage in the world. Yeah, still in that one fully completed item threshold where Liab have complete dominance. But the issue is that fight was still an even trade, even if it looked so good, even if it was so flashy. And now we hit two items where key members of J-Team truly begin to shine. Once Ophelios gets a crit item, once whoop, Hana is just a trundle, so what's he going to do? There was Nesty over the side, and that's where they have a decent amount of this gold on the side of Taipei J team, as he's kind of hit his first item spike on that LeBlanc. But looks like Liab not going to take that bait just yet. Want to see maybe a little bit more out of Rex so far. Unfortunately, this Pantheon getting only assists, no actual kills. But during that last fight in particular, I do like he was able to get on the back line and get on top of this Aphelios. Yeah, didn't actually pick up a single assist in that engagement, but bought enough time for his team to gather their thoughts and, you know, kind of just regain some good ground when it came to turning that fight around. J-Team, though, regaining some ground of their own, moving as a cohesive unit, choking out the vision, and looking to trade back on this mid-tier one to compensate for the one that they had just lost. And that's kind of, I guess, the one thing for Liab that you're a bit concerned about is the fact that Type J team's been able to at least keep the gold relatively even. Uh, as, again, you do have to think later as this game goes. If Lil V is able to survive these fights, he will likely just mow down the squishy members of Liab. Yeah, this is the best team fighting team in our region. And if you let them play the 5v5, they will just take over the game. Kennen goes a long way to setting up for that. LeBlanc, all she can really do is zone out the backline, but that's really all you need to do. While the supportive lineup of Trundle and Thresh buy space for the Aphelios to truly flourish. Liab, on the other hand, really need to aggressively fish for picks. Now they have some extra fog of war to fight with. And looking at the pink wood line around that mid lane, have a lot of room to breathe when it comes to aggressive potential. You do see Liab maybe starting to set up for an aggressive play, but you see Rest just playing it safe. And speaking of Rest here too, looking towards his Leandres, it looks like, as his first item after the proto belt that was finished earlier. 
And actually has himself about a 30 Arrow. CS lead. Uh, that's a very aggressive play over onto Lil V. Arrow comes out, ends up hitting onto this Thrash, and in comes that damage. Solar Flare ends up missing over the wall, though. Kanji comes once again, and he's on a rampage with the Camille right before the dragon spawns. Yeah, getting that pick does mean Liab have staked a claim for this Drake. Can pick that one up, can push themselves one Drake closer towards that Ocean Soul? Yeah, I was going to say Infernal for some reason, mm -hmm. but yeah, Ocean Soul. Nice! Really well done by Liab. They find their pick. Granted, it's on to probably not the most insane member. You Wait, what, what happened to that arrow? It didn't hit the Thresh, it just kind of It was soaked up, I believe. By but what? nonetheless, it don't matter. It don't matter. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> happy days. They, they oh, get Crucible. The kill. Crucible, there you go. There's a Crucible. Crucible was on CD. Well, no, it, was, it wasn't it's on CD. It's not used, sorry. But it's I... not, it wasn't used. I'm trying I, to give yeah, you a maybe. reason here, Abriz. The sure. arrow's gone. Right. There was no pause. Either Keep way. going. And Leon speaking of win. going, speaking of going, onto Hana they go. Uh, Spirit does not land. Rest not able to really join in on the fight just yet. Does have TB, but is pushed in by Kanji. It looks like Liav, that's going to be a kill that they maybe want back, but nice job here at least forcing back Hana as well as Nesty. Yeah, looking at Liab now, just to continue to rotate aggressively around the map. Fish for picks with Arrow, fish for picks with Solar Flare. Look for these crazy engages like this flank materializing from Mocha. Good pink ward usage, good vision denial, good pick attempt oh. to get through. Doi Doi maybe getting a little bit Arrow. trigger happy. Arrow's not going to land. Solar Flare only finds a slow. That's a lot used for a thrash that Liab maybe want back. Oh, yeah, that was just kind of gross, really. That was kind of uh, ugly. Thrash face checks, gets out. Throw out an <laughs> okay, arrow when he's to be trapped fair, between the turret and the wall. He didn't uh, fully and face miss. check, and I feel like Liab could have just waited for him to. But, like, Mocha and Dodo, they really wanted to get that damage onto Woody and didn't really chain CC at all. Yeah, uh, kind of hard for the Nidalee to chain CC, given the fact she does nothing. I think... Leona really should have been the one oh. engaging him. Doi Doi, he's going to get caught out here. Nice distortion damage coming out. Rex, though, wants to try and turn this one on back. Unfortunately, it's just not going to be enough. But in comes Kanji once again. He picked the right target and gets the tactical sweep. Rex, though, joining in onto the fright. That is going to be the stopwatch as Kanji keeps himself safe. Can they find a turnaround? Dawn needs to step forward, but he can't. And Kanji is left to his own devices, and he gets shut down by Rest. Yeah, I had my reservations for the Aphelios' range in these fights, but when he gets the tag, he can mow the Camille down from two screens away, chuck out the Shurikens, and because Nidalee did die, no smite to contest this Baron. And there you go. Baron now on the table for Taipei J Team. Up to Dawn and Mocha to somehow salvage this, which is a tall they order. Ults. They have ults. Do they actually want to go for it? You see 4,000 health. There comes in the Solar Flare, trying to take down Woody. Rest on to the Donji. There he goes. Don with the teleport, but still not going to be enough as he gets himself taken down immediately, trying to do what he can. Unfortunately, it's still a double kill for Rest. Doi Doi's alive, though. Doi Doi could look for this, but... Uh, okay, Nesty's in the way. Kind of tragic for the side of Liab. They lose one fight, they lose the Baron, and they lose the claim they had staked on this game. Two minutes on that Ocean Drake, gonna be the next big fight, but now Liab licking their wounds and hoping like hell that Kanji and Dawn, when he's respawned, can get some farm and scale up. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. uh, and this is gonna be one... They want back here is Doi Doi. One, one pounce was into the what? wall, and one pounce was immediately into death. And unfortunately, there, Kanji trying to salvage this as best as he can. Does get the shutdown from Nest Kind of cool, but unfortunately, we are now, start, now starting to see the fights where if Liab lose out, they start to drastically fall behind. I mean, as well as that, you're looking at a fight where J-Team have correctly identified they have no Panthol, they have no Ash Arrow, they have no Solar Flare fully commit, and this ultimate base team comp just folds under the consistent pressure being pumped out by J-Team's carries. Uh, and for this, Mocha and Don, this was an, an admirable attempt. Unfortunately, Don getting chunked just from long range from Lil V, and uh, Rest just jumps in on him. Yeah. This was Duel. really the miracle that Hello. he did. Mocha gets caught out. Don is eliminated. Nessie with a great flank. And there you go. Now we have mentioned it. Domino's thrown to roll in favor of Taipei J Team. As another death sentence going to connect. Rex gets hooked down. Rooted in. That's going to be the second tower taken. And Taipei J Team relentless on this push. Already looking for the inhibitor. 
even Kanji being pulled out of the bot lane because Liab wanted to re-engage that. But you see Nesty, hero play, assassinates Dawn and assassinates Liab's chances at taking that team fight. And that's the thing about Taipei J team. When they know they have the advantage, when they have the online components of their comp, they are not afraid to pull the trigger and give you the thumbs down once again. Underneath the fountain they go, forcing Liab to try and back off. That actually is going to be a hold coming out here from Liab. Dawn stepping forward, but that's already the base in shambles. It took two items. It took three items. And yet we now see J team firmly in control. But here's the follow up. Rex jumps in, trying to do what he can, but still can't find the kill. Doi Doi ends up just running into a super minion. Dawn steps forward. There you go. Does the arrow actually follow up? It's not on cooldown, Mister? but Rest again just denies them as Lil V finds the game over in the triple kill on the Aphelios. And Dawn, once again, that one lone survivor for Liab and his Taipei J team starting to play with their food. Some big, big stuns lining up the entire Liab team to be mowed down by this Aphelios. Lil V comes up huge, but it is Rest who drives that one home. The Kennen, we had our reservations. Doron's Blade, Grasp, weird on hit kind of start. Just goes full AP, full team fight and rolls in favor of J-Team. Unfortunately, you saw Dawn there, nowhere to run, was rude up, was just chunked down immediately. Nesty just says, all right, I'm a LeBlanc. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish you off with a quick Q. And at this point, Rex should just be backing off and that alone costs everything here for Liab. Yeah, I think that Liab, their mistake was contesting that tier two because of course you need Pantheon in the front with Leona to create some distance between the enemy and your carries. If the carries are gonna wave clear, but at the same time you need someone shadowing Nidalee and Ash because they both get instantly blown up by the LeBlanc. And so, yeah, I think you have a much easier job of both protecting your carries and stopping the LeBlanc from engaging if you do it inside the walls of your base. So now for Liab, it is a Miracle hold for the next, again, three minutes before the inhibitor comes up. We already see Type AJ team. They're going to walk this in. Hook is going to land. They try and go for Lil the engage. V. Kanji going deep into the back line. Wants to try and make this happen. Rest gets a slicing mailstorm and gets on top of Dawn. Once again, the Ash able to get back to safety, but in comes the rest of the damage. They do not stop. They do not re relent. It's a double kill. It's the ace for Type AJ team. And Liab, their flames get extinguished just like that at 30 minutes. J team do not stop, do not relent, but they do rest. This top lane hero, this cannon, finding access into these fights time and time again, slicing Maelstrom, slicing through Liab, and honestly, just a top lane masterclass, given the fact Liab had the start that they did. Unfortunately, uh, I, get, I say unfortunately, for Liab here in this game, that actually looked okay. That still looked good for them in an yeah. early game. Against, again, you gotta remember, Liab are ninth in the league out of 10 teams. Type AJ team, again, they only lost their second game last week. This team looked unbeatable, and the fact that Liab, to be honest, was able to at least keep the game rather even for the first 15 to 20 minutes, gotta give them props, but you still see those fights that everything gets blown apart where they can just not recover and you feel their confidence, their momentum just go straight out the window. Do J team actually secure first with that victory? I believe they may actually have no, done so. There's still four okay. more games to play. Still four more games. No, no, but I mean, so first for today, because they were second yes, behind yes. AHQ. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. they had a game in oh, hand, well, remember. We take it on a day by day basis, okay, Opal? <laughs> you know? Happy with where they're at. Liab may be a little less happy, but still a lot of promise in that game, as you mentioned. So they can convincingly upset some of the top table teams. It's just about playing to a consistent level against some of their compatriots in the bottom of that soup. Can we actually get a shout out here to Kanji though, in particular? He actually had himself a really good game. We finally got to see Kanji at a pretty good level compared to his previous. Of course, he's getting killed in this clip, but overall, there's a lot of good things to take away from Taipei, uh, from Liap, as I feel like Taipei J team were more or less the team that, again, they, they played into the bloodbath of the Southeast Asia squads. And 
It shows a little bit of that maybe component weakness that they got to be careful of, especially when Nesty is forced to play stuff like a LeBlanc as a carry. Yeah, I didn't like this one because the solar flare was actually used by Mocha to try and secure a greedy kill onto Woody. Didn't even get it. Just use it on the cannon to create space for Ash to auto attack instead of going full solo queue. I want to get this kill. And MVP. Is it really even a question? It's the new king of top, it seems, as Rest. Old king of top, I'll have you know. But, uh... Uh, I, okay, sir, Civ came back, but Rest still looking pretty good. All right? Especially here on this cannon. 9, 2, and 12. 87% kill participation. A very, very good showing coming out of the top lane from Type AJ team. I like how all of the veteran top laners just kind of sleep during spring, and then once summer is well underway and like the playoffs hopes are alive, the world seed is on the line, just complete dominance coming out of uh, some of the more established veteran players in this league. The veteran ship able to show on through, and for them, they will at least carry on, as that, of course, was our final game of the day. I do believe, though, we are going to have an interview, possibly with Rest, for his MVP interview alongside Patty. We'll get that set up and get that thing locked and loaded. But as far as today goes, we had ourselves arguably our quickest week, or our quickest day of PCS so far when it comes to summer. Almost all our games ending at 30 minutes or below. Yeah, definitely a little bit symptomatic of the meta just being quite fast paced, but also mm. these teams are no longer kind of opting into the late game hyperscaling comps and instead knowing that if you take control of one single fight come 10 minutes you can then snowball that into a team fight win well, we have an interview with Lil V so we'll go ahead and throw it to that Lil so last week you had a great game with AHQ. It was a really big game and you guys um, lost even though you guys had a big advantage and um, you were in a bad condition because you had a cold and then so did you guys go back and look at that game and did some review over it? So we, our team was kind of down after that game, also because I had a cold, so I wasn't able to do the uh, pick the champion that I wanted to. So we thought that after we went back, if, if we'd stay on our lanes and farm a little bit more and not focusing on getting that Baron before our opponent um, used their smite, uh, then we would probably have a better chance of winning that game. So I think that's what we need to work on later on. 那第二题想要问就是，呃，最近几场比赛，就是小兵都是被对方针对的目标嘛，然后原本欠钱的可能是无敌，那现在变成零，那有没有考虑要打得更保守一点，避免在前期可能陷入这样的劣势，或者怎
Yeah, definitely do have to look at Taipei J team as being our favorites heading into playoffs to at least secure the buy. Uh, of course, being that first team to have locked playoffs. Now a couple more of those moving up the ranks. And we take a look back toward our results here today. Blue side seemed to be the favorite all the way, except for that second game where AHQ was able to break it. But again, really heavy handed victories coming out from most of our squads. And uh, we didn't really get to see any real upsets, it seemed. Honestly, no, our predictions were uh, stellar all the way through, thankfully. I'm feeling vindicated at this point, probably because <laughs> I've uh, rejected the snake oil I was being sold by uh, by Resurgent, Jen Stern. <laughs> but uh, yeah, genuinely pretty happy with how this one has turned out. Clearly seeing the top team start to step up, and it's very promising that they are, you know, as you mentioned, closing out in these quick games rather than letting it draw out and being a little bit apprehensive towards making the decisive calls. Yeah, and you also saw there, of course, Taipei J Team, AHQ Machi, as well as now PSG have secured a playoff seed, considering that Liab can no longer finish above eight wins when it comes to their standings overall. And let's go ahead and take a look toward our matchups starting tomorrow at, of course, same time, same place. It's going to be HQ taking on Liab. Liab, they have one hell of a week alongside Resurgence, these bottom teams, uh, pretty much getting bullied by the, the, the top kids in the yard, it seems, at the moment, as well as we've got <laughs> HKA taking on Nova Esports and Machi taking on Alpha. Yeah, then following that will be a game of the week. J-Team versus PSG, super, super hype. And then it's Bajaya's second trial by fire, hopefully a more successful one, against a fairly dominant Machi. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of our bottom teams are uh, they're kind of just like kind of watching. They're like, can we can we fight against each other? Do we not have to fight against you guys at the moment? But maybe they find an upset and maybe they don't. If you guys enjoyed the casting, as always, be sure to check out the socials or use the command over in the Twitch chat, exclamation mark caster. You guys can follow us over on social media. And if you guys enjoyed the show itself, be sure to follow the page, whether you're on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, or if you're joining us with one of our television partners over in Southeast Asia, thank you very much. And if you want to join us over on Twitter, LOL Esports PCS will bring you all the info in English as well as all as our side content from myself, the rest of the production crew, Abriz as well. Thank you guys for tuning on in and we will see you tomorrow.